What's up boys? I just want to give a little context before we get into this video. So this video is just straight up my S runs for every single dojo thing excluding the test of mastery because it's not really that hard to get an S in test of mastery. It's probably the easiest one. I do want to mention that I did these all using Soupy's mod and Soupy's mod can be found in my discord. It's a great mod, does a lot of cool stuff. It's also the mod that's showing the events in Crystal Hollows in the upper left right now. I get a lot of questions about that. So I'd highly recommend using it, but this video is literally just going to be the runs uncut. So if anybody is curious about how to do it or the struggle with how to get S, you can watch how I do it. I'm also going to add some commentary over the runs, not me talking in real time, but me talking in post time so I can try to explain what I was doing and what I was thinking at the time of doing it. I'm pretty sure I did all S the fastest, like my first, so for my first S, the fastest out of anybody that I've ever heard of. Uh, the span of two hours force was long as force took me an hour and i got the other five done within an hour of just straight play time obviously it can be beaten once you finally get the hang of it obviously there could be somebody that did it faster than me but as of right now i was the fastest one that i know about so let's get into the video i do want to mention as we're starting this that i am getting over a cold so if i sound a little bit off that's why but other than that Let's just watch the runs and see how it goes. So, obviously test to control. I had no idea how to do this, but I got the hang of it really, really quickly. Obviously it helps a ton to have the red box outline around the mob itself, because then you don't really have to worry about decoys. This challenge is kind of RNG based. There was a run where I was at like 930 and then I got zombies back to back to back like three different sets of zombies that spawn on top of me and when you have to take your cursor off that long to kill them you just sometimes you just can't cope with it and get it back but obviously you want it to try to be diamond as long as you can you don't actually have to trace him as he's jumping up and down like perfectly as long as you kind of get in there you should not lose time which that's the main thing that you're trying to do in the test of control is you're not trying to lose time because you can obviously just gain the points and it does get harder because it gets faster and more events quote unquote events start to spawn so obviously the more points you can get towards the beginning the better but the main thing is to try not to try not to lose time and try to keep 20 seconds on the clock always it's also tough sometimes with server lag just try to simulate it, try to go about as fast as it normally would have been. The skeletons are a good event, uh, they'll knock you off him a little bit but it's not nearly as bad as the zombies so you just have to hope to get a nice run. The long jumps, kind of like what he did there, but the ones where he jumps like a very long ways are awesome. Because he's very easy to trace, very easy to keep it out on diamond. As well as if he's moving super fast and then he jumps he'll be slow so it'll be super easy to trace him. Never keep your cursor on the hitbox. You always want to have it a little bit in front, and if he turns, you're going to lose a little bit, but you want to try to get the most points possible, and you get that from having the diamond head. You'll never have the diamond head if your cursor is always on the hitbox. So that's the long jump that I was talking about earlier. And obviously I'm down to 6 seconds right now, but I only need 30 more points. Very, very easy to get as long as I don't lose any more time, and now I just got us. And I went on a little bit longer. S baby! Let's go! Booyah! I said I could do it! I did it, baby! Let's go! Woo! I was pretty happy about that because that was my fifth try. Moving into Tenacity, pretty sure this only took me three or four tries. Obviously I had done Tenacity a lot before this, but on this day it had only taken me three or four tries. I did turn on the like the line, which is the simulated path of the fireball that is firing at you. And the biggest thing with the test of Tenacity is it doesn't really get difficult until you get four gas firing at once. But when you do get to four gas, you want to kind of jump in a circular motion, kind of like what I'm doing right now.
But the biggest thing is just to focus on not jumping into the lava. Just It's almost like parkour, like just keep jumping from block to block. If you get hit, that's fine, because then you have more room to stand on. And I believe you can take 10 or 11 hits before you actually end up dying and failing to run. But at this point, you see I'm kind of moving in that circular area. I'm charging out of gas till I see where the orb is coming from, or where the fireball is coming from. And then I'm dodging immediately to the left so I can stay in that clockwise motion. There will be a point where I turn a circle and counterclockwise. Um, there's no real reason for this other than the fact that I think I just fell out of rhythm and I was trying to get back into rhythm with the gas. But you want to you wanna just run at a gas or pick a gas until you see his fireball and then try to get out of the way as soon as possible. And I'm not sure if this is RNG dependent or not, but you want to try to take each one at a time. You don't want to try to fight off two gas or dodge two fireballs from each gas at the same time. If that does happen, that's tough. Just try to get to a point where you can take each one on individually. And obviously they'll start firing faster. It doesn't really matter if you stay on the inner path or the outer path or the middle. You can basically do whatever you want. I'd like to stay in the middle because if it does, if it is coming super fast and I have fast enough reaction speed, I can dodge to the outside. If it's coming slower, I can move towards the inside so I have more room to focus on the next gas. See there, I got knocked back, but there was enough room on the inside that I was able to land and keep going. And here is where I turn and start going counterclockwise. It's more or less because I think I didn't see a, a proper jump with a fireball coming at me and I just didn't want to have to deal with it. And you see I cut forward on that path, jump over that fireball, avoid that one, tank that one, and by this point I just have to last for another 50 seconds. So I can tank them as long as I don't get knocked into the lava like that. I still have 40 health, so I can tank another three or four hits, tank another one, and just like that I have S. Yes, sir! Moving on to the test of discipline. This was really hard for me for a while because I always used to use my scroll wheel. And I still do use my scroll wheel, but I, I've become a lot more adept at using hotkeys to swap my hotbar slots, especially because my scroll wheel was broken for a little bit. Like the past month. I was able to get it fixed now, but. The biggest thing for Test of Discipline is hotkey. And you can't you can't just focus on whatever the most amount of mob there is. Like, like, like for example, say there's a ton of irons, like definitely focus on them, but don't skip out on the wood one. Like that wood one I just passed, I was able to snap back get him because that's extra points that you're missing out on if you're just running past him, not hitting him. If you're next to him, you need to be able to hotkey to him and, and kill that zombie. Obviously having the hitboxes help a little bit. I would say this this soupy one doesn't help like the most, but it does help a little bit. It helps you focus on what you're trying to hit. A little bit of lag there. And by the point it gets to diamond, this is where you really just need to be swapping your swords and staying more towards the middle. Try not to run so far out to the edges that it takes a while to get to the next zombie. You just want to stay on the outer edge of the middle so you can go in and out and in and out and try to get, try to be able to hit the most amount of zombies possible. You see right there, I kind of fumbled and I had my fist out. Luckily I didn't kill a zombie with my fist out because I would have gotten negative 16 points.
Just like that, I got us. Yes! Moving on to the test of stamina. I honestly thought this test was the easiest one, and I just kept screwing it up every single time I did it. Like, I feel like I should have been able to get S on this a long time ago. You'll see several times I'll, like, go into my inventory, or uh, I'm talking to Hank right now, I'll, like, stop to talk to him during the test, just because I don't, I don't take the test that seriously, because I think it should be easier than, or I, I think it's easier than I'm letting on. But, obviously, once you get to a certain point, you get to skip the easy mode. Easy mode, it's pretty easy, just get by it. When you get to the two block jumps, you want to jump about, the way I visualed it, visualized it was about a block to a block and a half away from the pillar is where you want to sprint jump towards it and you'll just end up on top and you'll be able to bounce through. And obviously I have a little bit of downtime there because you're finishing up the medium difficulty moving on to hard. For hard, for the three block jumps, I would try to jump from a block and a half to two blocks away, sprint jumping towards it. And that should get you all the way over without bumping the wall. Obviously when you can, you want to take the smaller jumps or the easier jumps. You also want to give yourself a lot of room to be able to see where you're jumping and where the next wall is coming from. Like here I had to run a little bit backwards to be able to get over that wall. That's not the greatest situation, but I was able to pull it off. Jumping for about two blocks out. Here I like to take the one block jump. Again, if there's a one block jump, you just gotta jump. Just gotta jump one block out. Um, you gotta be careful with the head hitters though, because if you do get too high, then you will fail the challenge. Here, jumping from one block out, missing the head hitter, completely fine. That's hard difficulty. Once you get to extreme, uh, this is where it gets a little bit difficult. I'm jumping from about three blocks out to get over the top of that, but it is a little nerve-wracking because you're jumping from very far ways away, jumping from one and a half to get over that two, especially with a lot of jump boost. Here I had to jump all the way around, land on the wall, and then just fall all the way back down on the platform. There I got a little lucky with that little skip up. I was able to walk under here, and then I have S. Yes! Here was the toughest one. Here's Test of Force. Test of Force took me an hour. Part of it is RNG. I heard Eelman took 12 hours, or Briefing took 12 hours to get them all done. Eelman spent like 8 on 4s, Briefing spent 5, or it might be the other way around, I don't remember. The biggest thing I can say for Test of Force is try to stay on the outer edge, try to one hit mobs off. If you do need to two hit them, or if there is a mob near the edge, like like if there's two stacked mobs near the edge, try to get both of them in and in one hit each. If it takes more than three hits, it's not worth the mob. If you hit the mob and on its way down hit it again, as long as it's falling down or it's about to hit the ground, that's where it will take the most knockback. The issue is if you hit it and it lands, then it will take like barely any knockback. It's also very annoying when the baby zombies get stuck in the little staircases in the ground.
Yes! Yes!